you? How do you know you're amazing? Ha <laughs> ha, how do you know? Do you get a health check? Do you get a fitness test? Do you go to the doctor? Do you look in the mirror? Do you get a body fat test? Do you weigh yourself? Do you measure yourself? Do you take your blood pressure? All of the above, Rowie. How do you know that your body's healthy, fit and strong? And I always that. Uh, I like to keep it really simple as an exercise professional who's been asking questions about health and fitness and being healthy and strong and fit and feeling fantastic all of my life. I don't want to ask embarrassing questions. I don't want to be invasive. I don't want it to be awkward. But as a professional, of course, I've always wanted to know where my clients are at the moment, where they want to go to. And I obviously am the connection in the middle. This is where you are now. This is where you're going. How do we make sure that that happens? And how do we test that we're on track? So some of the really simple things to ask, whether you are asking yourself the question, whether you're an exercise professional who's asking your clients the question, or if you go to a medical professional or an exercise professional and they have start asking you questions, maybe tick off in your brain, do they know these things about me? And should they know, that, should they know these things about me? So I'm going to start with my favourites. There's four questions. Do you have a stack of energy? Do you perform at your best? Do you love what you see in the mirror and the way your body feels to touch? And are you getting the results that you want from your eating and exercise plan? And if the answer is yes, I'm really happy to step out now and say whatever you're doing is really working for you. As an exercise professional, what do you actually want from me? It might be that you want to push a little harder or you've got a special event that you're competing or you want to compete in. But ultimately, if you can say yes to those four things, you're doing bloody great. If, you're, if you say no to any of those four, then what do we need to do? What do we need to change to make a difference? And then if there is going to be a difference, I'm going to keep asking those four questions. And then there are some other things that perhaps we could take a look at. So if you then go to a medical professional and, and uh, they want to know whether you're healthy, fit and strong, there are some biomarkers that most medical professionals will use. The first one will probably be resting heart rate. Uh, that tells you that your uh, heart doesn't have to work so hard when you're resting, which means it could last longer. Yay! So as you get fitter, your resting heart rate will come down. So that's a really easy thing to take note of and it's not invasive, it's not awkward, it's not uncomfortable. Uh, blood pressure is a really good one and most medical professionals will take your blood pressure. 120 on 80 is the normal uh, reading for that and ideally that's you want your blood to be flowing through your body without any hindrance or blockages, uh, without too much pressure. And again, when you exercise your blood pressure, your systolic pressure, the top number will go up. But ideally, you want to keep that, the bottom number low so that everything can flow around your body really smoothly. So that's a, a really good sign that things are going well. So number one is resting heart rate. Number two is blood pressure. Medical professional will probably take blood sugar levels and cholesterol levels, which again will tell you if, there, if you do have high blood pressure, uh, it could be because you've got high cholesterol. It could be that you've got some kind of damage being done by high blood sugar levels, which is, of course, precursor to type 2 diabetes. So there's some things that you want to really keep an eye on. And that's just from a medical point of view. Then uh, you can get all sorts of tests done. You can have a max VO2 test to tell you how fit you are. You can have, uh, there's all sorts of different strength tests. There's push-up tests and chin-up tests and uh, grip, grip strength tests and all sorts of ways to, ways to tell if you're getting stronger. But ultimately, pick an exercise that you really like, one that uses as many muscles as possible. And if you can keep lifting heavier with that same exercise, is that a great, or is it possible that that's a great uh, suggestion, a great observation that you're getting stronger? If you can lift heavier, you're getting stronger. So how do I know that I'm getting stronger? I'm lifting heavier, yay! And ideally, the same exercise. One of the things that often gets a bit confusing in the exercise, and I would call it industry now, not profession, because professionals would never do this. If you keep changing exercises for the sake of variety, you actually don't know that you're getting stronger. The only way that you know that you're getting stronger is pick a, a functional exercise, a compound exercise, compound exercise haha, that uses as many, ex uh, many muscles as possible in the same exercise, and aim to get stronger in that one particular exercise. Yes. Resting heart rate for fitness, get, uh, lifting heavier for strength. Then what about the, the good old mirror? You can get a body fat test done, you can weigh yourself, you can measure yourself with a tape measure, but ultimately if you stand naked in front of your mirror 
and the lights are on or it's bright daylight, it's pretty obvious what's going on with your body. Now that's on the outside. Uh, one of the really interesting things also from the outside is if you can see your muscle definition, it means you have low body fat percentage. If you can't see your muscle definition, it's usually high body fat percentage. So you probably don't need somebody to pinch your fat. Wouldn't that be awesome? Those calipers and, and all the different tests that you can now get done for body fat percentage, apart from the fact that unless they're done by the same person on the same day, at the same time of the day, with somebody who's really good at doing the test, uh, it's likely that that's a fairly inaccurate way to test your body fat. But if you stand naked in front of the mirror, here's another good one. If you jump, uh, apart from the bits that are meant to wobble on your body, fat wobbles, muscle doesn't. So if you've got wobbly, shaky bits versus uh, rock solid, hard bits, the fat bits or the wobbly bits are usually fat and the hard bits are muscle. But again, if you can see your muscle definition, that's a really good sign that you have low body fat percentage, easy. The other one that I really like is pick an article of clothing because the clothes cloth size doesn't change. The actual article of clothing doesn't change, but my body might go up and down in size. So I always use the example, I have a pair of black trousers. I bought them when I was 18 years of age. I keep trying them on once a week, once a month, depending on how I'm feeling. When you're as old as I am, uh, there's two things that are important. I don't want those trousers to be too tight. So if they are feeling tight, I eat less, move more. Uh, if those trousers are too loose, uh, at my age, I don't want to be too thin either. Uh, obviously, if you start losing weight, uh, you can start looking old, and I certainly don't want to do that. So I'm, that's, a, for me, a really great test, and I don't even like the word test, but trying on those black trousers is a really great way of saying, hey, Rowie, you need to eat a bit less, or Rowie, go eat some more cookies because your trousers are too loose. Yay! Woohoo! So what are you going to do to work out what's best for you? And here's a series of questions that, as an exercise professional, have made it really easy for me to ask questions of my clients, and I also ask these questions of myself. Because there's lots of forms you can fill out. There's lots of questions that can be asked. Sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes you forget stuff. So here's my simple system. It's just called head to toe, inside and outside. I'll say that again. Head to toe, inside and outside. So it covers off medical challenges and it covers off injuries. And it covers off how your body's feeling and how your brain's feeling. Because we're going to talk about the inside and the outside. So a series of questions, every time I see a client, every time I've ever seen a personal exercise coaching client, first time and every time afterwards, I want to make sure that whatever's happened between the last time I saw you and this time, that if there's anything I need to know, you're aware of it and I obviously need to be aware of it, physically or mentally. So if you start with the outside, really simple, top to toe. Let's start with all the joints in your body. Uh, anything changed from last time or what do I need to know about what's happening in your neck, what's happening in your shoulders, what's happening in your elbows, what's happening in your wrists, what's happening in your hands. And uh, particularly hands, for example, with older people, that can be arthritis and, uh, and no, it's really difficult to do some exercises if you've got sore hands. So I'm really aware of asking people about hands. So neck, shoulders, Elbows, wrists, fingers, hands. Then upper back, lower back. So neck, upper back, lower back. Uh, hips, knees, ankles, feet. Is anything happening in any of those joints that I need to know about? Have you had any injuries? Uh, is anything sore? Is anything inflamed? Has anything, giving you any, has anything been giving you any kind of pain whatsoever? So I'll say it again, top to toe, inside and outside. Every single time, what's happening at your neck, your shoulders, your elbow, your wrist, your fingers, your upper back, your lower back, your hips, your knees, your ankles, your feet. And that way you know that you've asked the questions and your client feels comfortable that you are aware of what's going on with them. Now the inside's really interesting. I always start again, top to toe, uh, top to toe, inside and outside, start with the head. Now your head, uh, what's going on inside your head mentally? Are you... Uh, mentally healthy. If you're physically feeling fantastic, that's great. But what about mentally healthy? Do you feel stressed? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel depressed? Are you happy? Are you sad? What's going on inside your headspace? 
And could that be a great question to ask? If you're going to be doing a, a, an intense exercise session, if you're going to be pushing to or aiming to push to 100% effort, there's two things there. There's relative intensity and there's absolute intensity. And absolute intensity is as hard as you can possibly go. But relative intensity is that's based on how tired you are, what your nutrition's like, are you hydrated, have you been sleeping, are you stressed, what's happening in your relationship. Could it be really important to ask what's going on inside your head? So head. Then we have this uh, if you're talking about the inside, we've got this really interesting uh, tube, this hose, this process that starts at your mouth and finishes at your bum. So what's happening with your digestive system, what's happening with your, with your food, is anything happening between what happens from what goes into your mouth to what comes out your bum. So how fast is that happening? Do you have long clear wheeze? Do you do number twos on a regular basis and are they sliding out easily? Do you have any challenges with your any of the bits between your mouth and your bum? Uh, does anything hurt? Is anything inflamed? Have you got any challenges with how your, your tummy feels? Anything to do with your intestinal gastrointestinal system? And that gastrointestinal transit time is really important. Uh, and I often ask my clients, let's eat some licorice or some beetroot or some corn and let's check how well it takes to come out because there are three things in particular that if you've eaten them, uh, when you do number twos, you'll be able to see how quickly they came out. And ideally, you want a gastrointestinal transit time of somewhere between 12 to 24 hours. You don't want food to be staying inside your body for too long. Then, of course, there's all the major organs. So how's your heart doing, liver, kidneys, uh, lungs, I, I do you get puffed easily? Uh, do you feel fit? And all the internal organs. And the reason they're so important to ask about is people have medical challenges. And as an exercise professional, is it important for me to know what their medical challenges are and or how can I help them improve the internal health and wellness of their body? And of course, when I've got a fit, strong body, all of the internal organs work better. Everything from my hormonal system, endocrine system, central nervous system, skeletal and muscular system, cardiovascular respiratory system, immune system, digestive system, everything works better when somebody's fit and strong. But how would I know that if I'm not asking the questions? So if I wrap all of that up beautifully, how do I know that I'm healthy, fit and strong? Those four questions. Do you have a stack of energy? Are you performing at your best? Do you love the way you look and feel in the mirror? And are you getting the results that you want from your eating and exercise plan? Really nice four questions. Then resting heart rate, blood pressure, cholesterol levels, uh, and blood sugar levels, which will give you a really good idea of what's going on internally. Do you have long clear wheeze? Are you doing number twos on a regular basis? Really good idea of what's going on on the inside. And then top to toe, inside and outside, let's always ask what's going on. As an exercise professional, as a coach, as a parent, a teacher, a boss, a leader, if you've got people in your life and you're giving them information about, about how to be healthy, fit and strong, could it be a really good idea to find out exactly what that person needs? And to save you time and to save your clients time, rather than talking about stuff that is either of no interest to them or they've got it fully under control. And I use an example. I ask the question, do you want any help with your nutrition, with your food? What are you eating at the moment? What do you like to eat? What don't you like to eat? What are the best times of the day for you to eat? Where do you like to eat? How do you feel when you eat? How do you feel if you don't eat? Uh, are you on track or off track with your eating plan to give you the re results that you want? If you are your own high performance eating coach, what advice would you give yourself? And specifically, do you want any help from me as your exercise professional with your food? Now that's just a quick run through of food questions. Really interesting. Most people will say one of two things. Yes, please help me. I don't know what to do with my food. Or they'll say, I've got a nutritionist, a dietitian, a naturopath, chiropractor, my sporting coach, I've got a healthy eating plan, I don't want your help. And the reason I share that with you is a lot of exercise professionals get really dug down deep in the whole food nutrition process without ever asking what exactly do you want from me and often that becomes offensive and sometimes even aggressive because the person has completely different ideas than their exercise professional. So how about we ask some questions? And the three things that I would love for all 
if you if you really want to help people to be healthy, fit and strong, should we know how to get people fit? Should we know how to get people strong? And should we be able to apply that information to their lifestyle? The time that they've got, the energy levels that they've got, the stress levels that they've got, their lifestyle. And how can we do any of that if we don't ask questions? So please, from my heart to yours, if you want to be healthy, fit and strong, is it possible? Of course. Can you help other people? Of course. But how can we do that for ourselves or for other people if we don't ask the right questions? And then to make sure that we're on track, how about we give ourselves some kind of, and I don't like the word test, but some kind of evaluation of, hey, I feel fantastic because I've got a stack of energy, I'm performing at my best, I love what I see in the mirror. I'm getting the results that I want and I know that because I've got a low resting heart rate, my blood pressure is normal, my blood sugar levels are normal, my cholesterol levels are normal, I've got an article of clothing that I love to wear and I feel fantastic wearing it and it fits me beautifully and I've got a stack of energy and I love my life. Isn't that called living life to the max? Thank you for coming to Romax. My name's Rowie. I'm here every single day because I would love you to be healthy, fit and strong for long, meaning the rest of your life, not just for a short period of time. And most diets and exercise programs are are focused on this short period. Healthy, fit and strong for long. Longevity experts are suggesting, longevity experts are suggesting that we should be able to live to 120, 130, 150 years young with a great quality of life if we are healthy, fit and strong. So let's get healthy, fit and strong. Wouldn't that be awesome? Super duper do, how are you? Healthy, fit and strong and I love it. Woohoo! Ha ha ha.